who here feels anxiety? Right now, you're like, man, this guy is super excited about anxiety. But that's because I'm hopeful that in this context, anxiety can be a force for change. And that change-inducing anxiety that affects me and affects up to 70% of you all is something called climate anxiety. Climate anxiety is defined as the chronic fear of environmental doom. And we need some change right now in a particular area of climate change that you may not be particularly familiar with. And that's the extreme carbon footprint associated with building algorithms, and specifically AI. The funny thing about climate anxiety is that it takes this very big part of the problem, and I'm very hopeful that in this context can make it be part of the solution. Because it has this way of making this distant, sometimes intangible thing, climate change, and make it very personal. And personal things can change our behavior. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Like, now I'll literally do just anything to reduce my own anxiety when it comes to this. I scroll through my news feed, and I see news about the fact that Bitcoin uses as much energy in the form of compute power as the entire country of Switzerland, resulting in enormous amounts of emissions. Or I see heartbreaking photos like this one. And while a year ago, I used to read into those stories in great detail, now all I can do is just scroll past it and immediately begin to self-soothe. And it turns out only one thing is good for that, and it's not meditation, three words, funny cat videos. <laughs> I watch a video compilation of cats being jerks, knocking stuff off of countertops, and I'm good. But only for a little while, because no matter how many of these videos I watch to make myself feel better, these dark anxiety circles under my eyes just keep getting darker. And my anxiety compels me to do something, but climate change has a way of making us feel powerless. So it was an important moment when an opportunity slapped me in the face, and that was the moment that I learned just about that severe climate impact associated with building algorithms. Now, you know algorithms, even if you think you don't. There are those things that make it so that you can unlock an iPhone with your face, or are powering self-driving cars, or make automated trades on the stock market. It turns out that algorithms use an enormous amount of compute power because they're crunching lots and lots and lots of data. And that data is all done and crunched in server farms. And I want you to picture those server farms in warehouses running day and night. And those server farms translate into enormous amounts of energy usage, with one expert predicting that it could be up to 10% of the entire world's energy by 2025. That's five years, guys. And that energy usage translates into emissions, and those emissions translate into my anxiety. So it was particularly interesting to me when this opportunity presented itself, because I happen to be building a technology platform that deals specifically with algorithms. Now, I had in that moment a feeling of powerlessness when that was presented to me, and I almost let it just go and forgot about it. But instead, it was like a thread had been tugged on and began to unravel the years worth of balled up learned helplessness on climate change. And I knew that 
what I was building, I couldn't let it make that worse. And as I thought about it, it even started to look like it might make it better. And more importantly, that it might allow others to contribute meaningfully as well, and maybe reduce just a little bit of that anxiety that they feel every day. To illustrate how, I need to tell you a story about the absurd way that companies build algorithms today. And I hope it makes you anxious. To do so, please meet Bob. Bob works for a dysfunctional mega corporation. And Bob's, Bob's company has decided that it wants to provide food to all of its employees, you know, so that they can live and work. Don't think too hard about it. They think it's going to give them a competitive advantage for some reason. So that food is going to take the form of bread. Bread is obviously a commodity. So you would think that Bob's company would just be able to go out and buy it. But remember, Bob works for a dysfunctional mega corporation, and this particular company has absurd security and procurement processes that make it extremely difficult for them to go out and buy things. In fact, it might take many, many months for them to go out and buy it, if not years. And meanwhile, while they're figuring that, uh, that out, poor Bob is getting real hungry. So what do they do when they're faced with the prospect of not being able to have that for years? The only thing they, they can, they think the fastest way to do it is to build it all themselves. So this company goes out and makes the farms and the factories to produce the bread at scale. It hires all the right scientists and engineers. And while that's going on, Bob is getting real, real, real hungry. It was hard, though, but the company did it. Sort of. Because it turns out, nine out of 10 of every loaf of bread that they produce is completely inedible. And the worst part is that all the emissions that you would associate with them happening to have a factory to produce this are being created. It turns out, every loaf of bread even the ones that are inedible, generate five times the emissions as the lifetime of an average car. Of the lifetime of an average car. But at least they got that one edible piece of bread for poor hungry Bob, right? No! Bob's dead, guys! It took too long! That's his dusty skeleton! <laughs> The absurdity of that situation is mind-boggling, right? We couldn't buy a commodity because of crazy security and procurement. We built a factory creating enormous amounts of emissions. We killed Bob. We're killing polar bears. And it probably blew through millions of dollars to get there. When you look and dissect that example, it really highlights two problems that organizations are facing. And I hope that made you anxious. Because that's exactly what's happening when companies are trying to build algorithms. Those two problems, they're a practical one and a severe waste problem. And that practical problem is actually pretty straightforward. It's hard for companies to build algorithms, and it's hard for them to buy algorithms because of those reasons. Now, some algorithms are truly unique to a company's business, and they should go absolutely build those internally and not go out and buy them. But it turns out many more algorithms are like bread. They're commodities. Yet companies are trying to build these, the same ones, over and over and over again effectively reinventing the wheel. And just like in our example, nine out of 10 times, a company fails to get one of those algorithms to, into actual use or production. So then it, one, you wonder, why wouldn't they spend more time trying to figure out how to buy them? Well, some companies do. They buy them from the companies that are good at building algorithms. 
There's also thousands of free algorithms online being created by data scientists and engineers in something that we call the open source community. But just like in our example, companies today have some pretty crazy security and procurement processes that make it difficult for them to go out and buy these as fast as they need to. And these processes are extremely important because admittedly, algorithms are more complicated than bread. But when technology is moving at the light speed that it is today, companies feel like they're having a hard time to compete, and that's why they do it all themselves. It's because they can't get it fast enough. And that's how you end up with a poor, dead, metaphorical Bob. But what if they could? What would that look like if companies could get access to algorithms at scale? Fortunately, history gives us some clues there, because it turns out that when you give creative individuals the ability to sell something that they've created on a safe and trustworthy platform, they go make incredible things. Etsy, it's a marketplace for craft goods, incredible things that you may never have even thought about. I myself have bought a picture of a cat in a top hat and a monocle. You may be seeing a trend here. But enterprise companies are doing this too. Jeep Wrangler has literally hundreds of companies dedicated to building custom parts in their marketplace to the extent where Jeep has to take these custom developers into consideration every time they upgrade one of their models. Finale, it's a music software program, same thing. Marketplace, people go build add-ons to improve it and sell them. And you all probably know Photoshop, a popular design software, same thing. People can go build plugins, sell them on the marketplace to enhance Photoshop. And you know who it turns out are really creative and love to build things? data scientists and engineers. They're already building those thousands of algorithms that I told you about in the open source community. Many of those algorithms that they're building are really quite good. But a lot more of them are incomplete, just proof of concepts, or don't really have the security that companies need today. So it stands to reason that if you were to supply these data scientists and engineers with a monetary incentive, to pay off what I'm sure is $85,000 in student loan debt, that they might just get that enough incentive to take that proof of concept into a fully working algorithm. Given that speed of how these are developing today, it seems inevitable to me that a marketplace that provides that monetary incentive for data scientists and engineers will arise for algorithms. So that's what we did. We built one of the world's first marketplaces for algorithms. And we built it in such a way that makes it so that enterprise companies can download and use them in a secure way that's right for them. And we were happy solving just that practical problem, but now we have a new purpose with the marketplace. Because just like in our example, it turns out that Commoditized algorithms, some of them today, are creating as many emissions to be built as the lifespan of five cars on the road. And when you combine that with the fact that, again, nine out of 10 algorithms that companies are building internally never actually get into use, but are still creating all those emissions, that's dismal. So we hope that our marketplace for algorithms, while it will certainly create more algorithms that may contribute to that. We hope that it will reduce the need for companies to go out and constantly reinvent that wheel, reinvent those commoditized algorithms like they are today. And if you get them from stopping building as many algorithms as they are today, you're effectively taking thousands of cars off the road. It's also our commitment that we will begin to set the standard for what it means to sustainably build algorithms that doesn't exist yet. 
and further will provide free access to the tools and algorithms that can help reduce that. For example, there's an algorithm today that reduces data needs. And if you reduce the data needs, that reduces the energy costs, and that reduces emissions. But it doesn't stop there. <laughs> you know those brilliant data scientists and engineers that I talked about? They already have the next coolest thing in their head, ready to be built like maybe an algorithm that uses your personality to predict the perfect cat for you, or more important things. Additionally, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of papers coming out of universities that detail how to build algorithms that might just solve some of our most pressing problems. So between our brilliant friends and those papers, there is something in there that can start to carve away at the enormity of our climate problem. If algorithms can be part of the problem, they can be part of the solution. We just need you all to build them. And you will. Because, like me, and at least 70% of you and the thousands of data scientists and engineers, you feel that anxiety creeping in every single day. And while a monetary incentive might be an enabler, it's that anxiety that's going to drive you to create things to help fight climate change. So with some cold hard cash, the right platform, and a little bit of hope, we can make climate anxiety a thing of the past.